Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Business Today Television. And in our ongoing series of how to deal with markets and how to invest them, uh, invest in them at a record high level, we've been speaking to a series of uh, uh, technical analysts, fundamental investors, and now we are joined by Monica Hullen. Uh, she is an author, a financial educator, and has been doing some very serious work in simplifying financial jargon and helping you navigate uh, this uh, wonderfully complex world of uh, uh, financial investing. Welcome, Monica. This is your second book. Let's talk about mutual funds. It's very wonderfully and easily written. It's very easy on the eye and on the ear. And it's uh, an excellent uh, talking point for everybody who wants to make money the easy way uh, in this uh, roaring bull market. Welcome to Business Today Television. Thank you so much. And I have to tell you one small fact. I began my journalism career in Business Today. So it's a complete delight to be on the show. Wonderful. So it's a different sort of a ghar wapsi, and you are more than welcome to be on the show for as many times as you wish, discussing what we mutually like, that is mutual funds. So Monica, uh, let's, let's get cracking on this seemingly a uh, complex puzzle that we have in front of us. Markets are at a record high, and you have a record number of investors who've missed the rally. So first things first, what do you feel should those investors who missed investing in this wonderful run-up that we are seeing should do? And what are the two or three easiest uh, steps that they should take to participate in this ongoing bull run? I can only begin to say that when I joined Business Today, that was my first job, it was 1991, and the Sensex value in that year was 2000. <laughs> and over the career that I have seen in journalism and post that, I have met Mr. Sensex at 4000, 8000, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, 35, 40, 6, you know, 60,000, now 66 today. And at every point when it then reached the lifetime high, People said it is too high and we have lost out. Hmm. So the point that I'm making is that the more that you delay, the more you will stay out of the market. Stock markets will go up if the underlying economy does well and there That's are profits to be made, companies grow. It reflects onto the stock market and in the stock market, specifically it will reflect onto the broad market indices like Sensex and Nifty 50. So it is not too late. Indian growth is projected to be sustained and strong for the next many, many years. Some people say three years, some people say decade, some people say more than that. Whatever it is today in the world, India is looking like a story whose time has come. A lot of that reflects onto the market. So even if you feel that you have not been part of this particular rally, you know, remember, you felt like this in the last rally and you felt like that exactly. in the rally before that. So the only time to invest is today. And when I say that, I don't mean that you take all your money and you put it, go to the market one day and put it. But we have wonderful products called systematic investment plans. So really sort out your investing emotions and strategy. And then you can approach the market any day that you like. So wonderful. it is really about doing your homework before you come to the market because markets so, go up and down fantastic so there are two things that you can uh, take away from uh, uh, monica's uh, uh, opening remarks one the economy and the markets uh, they move in tandem and uh, since uh, indices like the sensex and the nifty are by very nature compounders so if you invest in them over a period of time and you make continual inputs into those indices or uh, funds that track those indices, you are certain to make money and lots of money in the longer term. Monica, let's now uh, break it step by step. Uh, because India is such a young country and we have millions of people who uh, are getting newer jobs and are getting monthly salaries and are very keen to invest, what are the two or three initial uh, steps they should be taking uh, for entering into this uh, booming sector? Yeah, we are a very young in age population in a very ancient country. Yeah. And for this young population who's just coming into their own first jobs, 
your very first step is to have your cash flow system in order and that's something i've written in the previous book to this one uh, which is let's talk money that do not start your investing journey unless you've done the preparatory steps so it's very well to talk about asset allocation diversification but unless you know how much money you have on a sustained basis to invest really regularly long term you should not approach the market so my suggestion to everybody out there who has not yet begun on the journey who has begun and doing it in a haphazard manner is really to drill down and figure out how much is it that every month i can spare for long term investing that's your first step the second step would be to figure out when do you need this money do you need it within the next 3 years next 7 years or beyond that now depending on that answer you will pick a mutual fund category which matches that holding period mm -hmm. so short term needs will have a different product category medium will have different and long term will have equity within equity look equity has 11 categories Absolutely. all right debt has 16 categories hybrid have six so there are for every situation for every investor need there is a category you don't need all of them but unless you know what you need you will always make mistakes so i cannot stress this enough that whatever time that i've spent in writing the book unless you spend a lot of that time with me in reading and absorbing this book it will not help you okay it is not easy money it is not not wealth tomorrow but you will have to internalize the lessons of the book and then make them your own it's suitable to your portfolio and again shailendra i have said this over and over again i don't give a list of five funds i don't insult readers and viewers by handing them mm. something which may be completely unsuitable you will have to do the work you will have to decide your own schemes that work for you after you have done some preparatory work in coming to that point so there is a okay. lot of work ahead for any of the readers of the book it is not it's not uh, i am not giving a tip sheet i understand that uh, monica let's deconstruct this further now there is uh, a person uh, who's say 25 years old uh, is about to get uh, his or her first paycheck and uh, Uh, after he's uh, gone through your uh, second book as well as the first one he decides that equity is the way forward and he wants to do it simply without a headache uh, and he wants to be in the longer run what do you suggest direct equity or mutual funds for the equity part of the portfolio i would strongly suggest that the person uses mutual funds i'll tell you what the issue with equity is one is that people get into trading and speculation very quickly they don't know where to stop in terms of buying direct stocks they get into uh, speculation which we've seen the data which has come out of sebi 90% of the people don't make money so that's one problem that i have with direct stock investing second is that you simply don't have the knowledge to pick stocks directly the amount of time that you need to spend in every stock selection and maintaining that portfolio is so much that you may not be able to do your day job along with this hmm the third thing is that when you have a portfolio and you will at most buy what three or five stocks your risk of concentration is very high hmm. an average equity scheme or a mutual fund scheme will have between 30 to 50 stocks right so if your upside is lower because you know five multi bagger stocks can do very well for you but five dud stocks can really lose you money absolutely 30 to 50 stocks in an average mutual fund scheme your highs are not that high your lows are not that low but investing is really about risk mitigation especially when absolutely. you get out of the guaranteed return world into market risk and remember market risk is just not equity it's also debt products it's also gold so when you get into market risk what you're trying to do is get a good risk adjusted return how much how has this return been earned how much risk did the fund manager take that should be important to you you want returns which have not come at the cost of very high risk so those those are the sort of uh, discussions that you have either with a planner or with yourself in terms of self education before you choose the two routes 
So I would say for a professional with a day job, a doctor, lawyer, self-employed businessman, you don't have the time in your day to track markets regularly. Will Russia and Ukraine war get over or not? Will the Fed raise rates? Will there be a nuclear war? We don't know. Each of these things have an impact on the global markets and on specific stocks. Do you have the ability to decode these global events? I'm telling you, I don't. I don't own a single stock. I feel I don't know enough, right? So you, it is really for a professional, for a person who's not a formal fund manager, a mutual fund route just is a lower cost in terms of risk way of getting the right, growth that equity gives you, yes. Okay, so uh, let's dig deeper. Uh, equity is the way forward and uh, obviously because of lesser risk, uh, uh, you would prefer, and a lesser headache, you would prefer uh, the investor go via the mutual fund route. Uh, now comes the crux of the issue, Monica. How many funds do you think are enough and beyond which diversification becomes useless? Uh, we are again looking at the same investor. Uh, who perhaps wants to put in 10 to 15,000 rupees per month, uh, uh, as you would suggest via SIP. What is the maximum number of funds you would suggest that uh, uh, this newbie have in his or her portfolio? For it, so remember, when I'm saying portfolio, I'm meaning both debt and the equity side. But if I just take the equity side of the portfolio, yes. no more than four to five schemes. You don't need, you need one broad market scheme which could be an index fund but you know as your portfolio gathers meat you need the diversification and the higher return possibilities of a mid cap and a small cap so yes. as you go down this equity journey you can very well begin with an index fund on the broad market set six nifty 50 but a few years down the line you will have to diversify even your equity portfolio so you will have then one mid cap, one small cap, that's already three funds. You might even have a view on a sector fund. You may want yes. a foreign fund in your portfolio. So I'm counting at most four schemes in an equity portfolio. And believe you me, I have seen portfolios with 20, 25 schemes. All you'll that be you surprised. Are... You'll be surprised, uh, uh, Monica. A lot of people approach me with their mutual fund portfolios. They look like stock portfolios. I have seen the maximum number of portfolio folios at about 45 uh, uh, funds, <laughs> and uh, it, it was a difficult evening to try and convince the person that uh, uh, actually you've over diversified and you have the same stock in uh, so many I, portfolios. You know, I was talking really to a doctor, and yeah. uh, she had shown me the portfolio. I said, "Your planner has given you four medicines for the same stomachache." You also oh, need something for the headache. She says, "Oh, I now I understand. You know, it's, you so the you bought four things which do the same thing. You may Absolutely. as well be just in a simple index fund. Like forty schemes have no meaning. While while this is a different topic on how uh, you know uh, funds are missold, but uh, coming back uh, to the mean uh, that we are talking about, uh, Monica. Uh, so three four funds uh, that you talk about start with an index fund." to look at mid cap, look at small cap. The other interesting thing that's happened over the last five, seven years, Monica, is the advent of uh, international funds, which means that in rupees, we can invest in markets as diverse as the NASDAQ on one side and the Hang Seng of the Hong Kong exchange on the other. Your views whether index, uh, whether international funds should be a part of a broader portfolio, and if yes, uh, what is uh, uh, what is the percentage of the overall equity portfolio you would allocate into international funds? International funds are a wonderful diversification, a geographical diversification of your portfolio. But remember that your portfolio needs to be of a certain size. You need to have a certain meat on the portfolio. You need to yes. have a certain risk-taking ability before you get into the very risky category of international funds. So SEBI has a riskometer. It goes from one, which is low risk, to six, which is very high risk. Foreign funds are at seven. It's off the riskometer. Okay, so Absolutely. SEBI's own internal guidelines say that this is risk, which is very, very high because you have currency risk, you have country political risk, all of that. Um, but so I would say 10 to 15% of a mature portfolio for a person who can take the risk. All these qualifications are there, but a lot of these funds operate what are called fund of funds. 
okay yes now the problem with the fund of funds after the february uh, i think march was it april uh, finance ministry directive on debt funds taxation is that they are suddenly very unattractive they are going to be taxed profits will be taxed at your marginal uh, rate and it used to be you could uh, index you know you could get a long term indexed capital gain uh, rate earlier on the debt fund so that facility has gone that tax advantage has gone unfortunately for some reason the tax department taxes all fund of funds whether the underlying is equity or, or debt as debt funds so that's a dampener in terms of the taxation on these uh, fund of funds which are such wonderful uh, products for indians wanting to diversify there is another category who buy stocks directly we still yes. don't know what the tax uh, analysis what the tax impact of those are we don't know yeah. if they will i, I yeah. think that's so, a taxation and, minefield uh, and in a fact lot of caveats for the uh, viewers that should you approach it please approach it look at this thing animal through all the windows okay in terms of access in terms of risk in terms of cost and in terms of taxation before you approach this okay so uh, here is a ride on what monica is saying uh, international funds are meant for a certain uh, highly evolved kind of an investor and uh, somewhere like 10 to 15% of your overall larger mutual fund can be uh, a part uh reflecting the international scenario but uh, uh, take a deep breath uh, read at least the taxation part of international mutual funds because it's a minefield and it changes fairly regularly monica uh, again coming back to your book let's talk about mutual funds i was just trying to understand if there's a magic pill you've sort of uh, fed into the book where uh, you know we are able to convince uh, you know people who are entering the market uh, aged 25 30 to somehow try and change their uh, uh, cerebral landscape and invest over a 20 year period is there a magic pill there isn't a magic pill there is only mistakes that they will make and it is very good that so many people have dabbled in things like cryptocurrency yes. um let no so i'm going to qualify this it is very sad that they have lost money but it is a very important lesson taught when the stakes were much lower so uh, the argument is that when you are 25 when you are 28 the ability to invest is very little hopefully you've not leveraged you've not used leverage mm -hmm. your money at risk in a proportion to your salary may be very high but in terms of overall money it's very little so you may have lost this but i'm hoping it's a very important lesson learned that you come back and understand the joys of long term investing the uh, the stress free ability to do the things that you enjoy while your yes. money works where you don't lose sleep on it so for this cohort cohort i would imagine that this trading losses and the crypto losses might have been that little nudge to look at this a little more deeply and go away from this let's get rich tomorrow attitude uh wonderful monica we are just uh, drawing uh, towards the close of this uh, excellent show uh my final question to is to you is how do you invest your money ha huh, good question exactly as i write in the book so i eat what i cook okay like i said um other than the one house that we own my entire net worth is in mutual funds i don't okay. own a single stock i don't believe in real estate as investment i don't have any other property other than the one roof over my head uh i exactly in the same way construct my portfolio remember my portfolio will be a very different portfolio than an average persons because i understand the risks i understand the products i would have i mean i do have a fairly high risk appetite because i know the products so my portfolio will be geared towards more risk because i understand risk adjusted returns i know the schemes so i'm saying that uh, if you whatever i write in the books i do first myself so it is really an honest attempt to communicate that you know what this works wonderful so uh, monica thank you for being with us and uh, for those uh, who are really interested in uh, learning all about uh, funds here is again a wonderful book that uh, uh, monica has written 
and I wanted to ask you if you are headed for any bookshop for uh, signing of the books then uh, people who are watching this show uh, might be uh, keen to meet you in person and get it autographed from you. Any plans over the next one week to be in any bookshop in Delhi? Uh, Delhi, I don't know, but Mumbai probably next week. So I will tweet it out. I'll put it on social media. There is okay. a book signing happening in Mumbai next week. So okay. I will put out the schedule. And I'm really hoping to meet some readers. It's really good to get feedback. Wonderful. And we wish you all the luck with your third book, which I'm sure is on your writing desk. So let's talk about money. Let's talk about mutual funds, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that's Monica Hallen for you doing a fantastic job in educating investors and bringing the best out of uh, the things that you can invest in mutual funds. Thank you for joining us and I hope you enjoyed this excellent show. Thank you, Monica. Exclusively learned from our sources that uh, Center has collected close to rupees 55,000 crore under small savings schemes collection for quarter one. In fact, um, if you remember the mop up, then the fresh mop up for uh, June has been close to 20,000. We had also told you earlier that about 24.